So my presentation here is uh, basically a good transition from what you've heard uh, in, the, in the morning with all the other uh, speakers talking about the user experience and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so what I'm trying to uh, talk today is basically the lessons and the tips that we have learned by powering WebRTC into the uh, enterprise applications and optimizing the customer experience uh, using WebRTC. Uh, so a quick show of hands on how many of you recognize the word CX. All right, uh, not surprising. That's good. Uh, so when you think about UX, that's user experience. But when I talk about CX, that's basically the customer journey uh, through, the, through your app. It's like some total of the customer experience as the customer goes through the app and experiences uh, different things through the app. So what do customers expect from great experiences? So they expect consistent voice, video, the data is everywhere. Uh, so aggregate the data and make it a personalized journey for the customers. And connected interactions. So that in turn will give them a very rewarding relationship with, with your service. Uh, and with your application as well. So the, today, I think we've had speakers talk about the customer service applications. We have speakers talk about the healthcare applications. So any, any kind of applications works very well with WebRTC. So uh, either healthcare, insurance, uh, customer service ex uh, experience, and so on and so forth. But uh, I think, oh, oh. yeah, I skipped one. So, uh, but the customer journeys are really complex. Uh, so we have seen that you can definitely uh, use WebRTC for a minimum viable feature set, like video, voice, uh, and, and uh, what have you. Uh, but there are multiple devices, multiple networks, and multiple channels. So taking the customer seamlessly through the transition journey is not easy. So, um, I, uh, so Basically, any broken journey, uh, any, any journey that is broken here uh, drives customers away. So uh, data shows that if the customer has a bad experience, like a patchy video or uh, a bad audio, once they come to your uh, application, it is 91% very likely that they'll, not, they'll choose an alternate service. So that's where uh, the customer experience becomes very important. Uh, and it's one of the top priorities for all the enterprises today to have a seamless journey uh, and provide a very good customer experience for their customers. So uh, the tip one is enable seamless journeys. What does this mean? So I think in the very beginning, uh, Sahi talked about uh, the web angle of WebRTC and the VoIP angle of WebRTC. So when, whenever we talk about WebRTC, we talk about this paradigm shift, right? So paradigm shift from uh, communications uh, as, as a silo to a communications as a feature in your web application. Uh, but that comes with a certain challenges as well. Because uh, if you are, uh, like, like me, very impatient, you start uh, put, uh, pressing the browser reload buttons uh, whenever uh, the call doesn't connect, or the call freezes, or the video freezes, what, what do you do uh, when the page doesn't come, come up in the web browser? You reload it, right? So uh, there, there are web style browser reloads and uh, the classic uh, back button. Uh, and, the, and of course, the native apps do crash sometimes. And there are connectivity changes, Wi-Fi to 4G, device handoffs, and, and server side failures. Of course, nothing uh, here the customer cares about. All the customer cares about is basically the experience that the customer would have. So what we have done is we have solved this by the concept of session rehydration. So basically, it is to keep the session alive when the co connectivity is interrupted and recreate it as soon as the connectivity is reestablished. So what we have done was, uh, I think three years ago, when we started building our, our product, which is WebRTC session controller, uh, we were looking at the drafts. And there was a, a, a draft, IET, IETF, RTC web draft, uh, where uh, we got this inspiration. So basically, uh, I, I think 
uh, the session rehydration didn't make it into the final state because maybe my guess is it has a lot to do with signaling and how reliably the signaling is uh, implemented. But we took this concept and we built on it. So what happens is, uh, let's say uh, th there's this client and the server, and uh, for some reason the client uh, goes down. Uh, and uh, the client has to reconnect to the server, right? So uh, what we do is, when the client is reconnected, uh, is trying to reconnect, uh, when the client goes down, uh, on the server side, we still keep the session. So we still keep the WebSocket session. Uh, and when the client is trying to reconnect, for example, maybe the browser crashes or the browser reload, when the client is trying to reconnect, uh, we, we have some session ID, some information on the client that we store. Uh, so that session ID is passed onto the server, and the server detects that this is the session ID with which the WebSocket connection has been made earlier, and then it resynchronizes uh, that session ID and, and it recreates the WebSocket. So basically, we built a very reliable uh, signaling protocol. It's called the uh, JSON RTC protocol. Uh, so basically, that's based on WebSockets. So it does a complete resynchronization. Uh, so it has the reliability built to the message level. So whenever the client comes back, uh, so it resynchronizes the client messages and the signaling uh, is reestablished. And then you have the ICE procedures. You you send the new SDP and the whole shebang to uh, get the message working. So what does it give you? It gives from the customer perspective. Your connection, uh, it, it's a seamless journey. So even if your app crashes and you, and you bring the app back, uh, it, it uh, shows as if uh, nothing has happened. Maybe there's a, a little a pause on the RTP side because RTP is generally UDP, and, and that's, uh, that's somewhat expected. Uh, but it's very uh, unnoticeable, I should say. Uh, and then uh, I do come from VoIP background. So when uh, I, I compare the VoIP call setup times with uh, uh, the web call setup times, um, I, I do find uh, the web setup times are a little slow, or maybe it's me, just me. But uh, fast call setup times impact uh, customer experience. So customer expects the call setup time to be really fast. Uh, and WebRTC has this call setup procedure that takes considerable amount of time to establish. And, and why not? Because there's a lot of things that is going on, right? You have to gather the candidates. You have to prioritize the candidates, exchange the candidates with the remote party. And, and then there's connectivity checks. And then uh, finally, you get uh, the candidates that you connect with. So th there are multiple ways uh, this can be solved. Um, and I think most of the people now are talking about dynamic media peering. Uh, this is where uh, you prioritize candidates that, that are most, most likely to work first. Then you establish the connection with that relay candidate. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, you try in parallel uh, with the other parties that can communicate directly. And if they can, uh, you switch the media. Uh, so alternately, there is the trickle ice um, that reduces the time for ice procedures to complete. So basically, it is uh, an extension to the ice protocol. Uh, and uh, it sort of reduces the time because it uh, um, incrementally does the candidate gathering, and that sort of optimizes the call uh, setup times as well. So customer experience is tip two. So identify and solve the weak points. Solving weak points is one thing, but identifying that is, is a more difficult thing, actually. Uh, but so don't be afraid to step back. And I think we have heard this over and over again uh, today is um, if the call drops uh, if in the middle of the conversation, that's one thing. But if there is a patchy video, that's a big no-no for the customer. Um, so how do we solve this? So th there is a good uh, WebRTC Stacks API that can measure uh, jitter, packet loss, the bit rate, bandwidth. Uh, and of course, this, is maybe, this might give you some after fact um, uh, data, but then you have RTCP feedback mechanisms from which you can uh, calculate the quality of your stream. Uh, then with the frame rate, you can uh, find out if the CPU uh, of your device can handle the video and, uh, and also the battery, right? If your battery is really down, uh, you wouldn't want your customers to connect to the video. I mean, you, you can either uh, trigger a message or say that you can uh, fall back to audio. So there are different ways you can do that. 
Uh, and of course, it need not be audio. It can, you can switch from an HD video to a low resolution video or audio depending on uh, various factors. So it's basically aggregating all this data and triggering some sort of a message uh, that the application can catch and provide a seamless experience to the customers. And of course, this uh, now we have uh, simulcast. So ba basically, you can encode the same video stream in different resolutions so that you don't penalize both the parties. So you only send a low resolution video to one of the parties, and the other party can have um, a good uh, HD video or audio, or whatever it is. So I think we, we have different other speakers talking about simulcast and so on later uh, today. So I'll sort of step this. And one thing I noticed is um, uh, WebRTC notifications. Um, and, and I didn't hear many people talk about it, but uh, from where I stand, it's, it's very, very important. So the customers expect to stay engaged when they wander away from the app. And they want to stay engaged without draining the battery. So there are multiple things you can do uh, for, for this. So basically, uh, from from my perspective, whoever is handling the signaling should also handle the notifications. So uh, you can optimize the web, RT, web socket connections with uh, push notifications. So what? how does the battery drain, right? So you have the client, you have the server, and the client is always pinging the server or letting the server know that I'm alive. And that will take up a lot of resources, and the battery uh, uh, goes down pretty quickly. So what you can do here, so you can optimize the web socket connection. So basically, the client can uh, tell the server that, hey, uh, I am hibernating for a while um, uh, during the period of inactivity, and the client can go off. The web socket connection is broken. Uh, and on the server side, uh, the server can uh, keep that connection uh, for a while. And whenever there is uh, a message uh, coming or incoming call coming in for the client, the server can rehydrate. Again, I'm talking about the concept of rehydration here. Basically, the, uh, the server can rehydrate the client session, wake up the client using a push notification, and, and resume the call. So um, there are many ways you can implement uh, the push notifications. You can con directly connect to the APNS, GCM uh, servers, get the notifications, or you can use the mobile. Uh, you can create your own push notification gateway. Basically, it can co connect to multiple um, uh, notification services, and it can register multiple apps and so on. Uh, and of course, um, Chrome has push notifications as well. So we have uh, Chrome push notifications based on W3C API and, and Service Worker, which works well on the desktop as well as on the mobile browsers as well. And, and finally, I think uh, I was thinking whether, whether I have to talk about this or not. But uh, sure, certainly we do, because uh, we all like elephants. Um, and especially the big ones. So interoperability is a key to success in the enterprise applications. Uh, and from uh, where I stand, uh, almost 60% of Oracle uh, enterprise customers run their desktop applications on Internet Explorer. And Oracle has a, is a big player in enterprise application space. Uh, so how do we solve the IE stop gap on the desktop? So we, uh, we did use the flash fallback solution for a while. Uh, but now I think uh, our customers look at, look with a funny face when we talk about the flash fallback. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, in the interim, uh, there are IE adapters, that are IE plugins uh, that you could use uh, for multiple versions of to support the multiple versions of Internet Explorer, uh, because that's a funny thing, right? It's not one version. If you look at some of the enterprises, uh, banks and some insurance companies, they even go back to a very old versions of IE, maybe 6, 7, um, whereas uh, until IE 8, even WebSockets are not supporting. Uh, and then wait for Microsoft Edge. So Microsoft Edge is now supporting Get User Media. So probably we'll hear about uh, what and when uh, in the session that is coming up with the Microsoft folks. Um, how about Safari? I think that uh, that is a question. So I think on the Safari side, the stop gap is, is hedged uh, with various things. So we have the native iOS WebRTC support, which uh, sort of hedges uh, that, as well as um, I think people can uh, use um, Chrome on, on Macs and so on and so forth. Um, and then uh, finally, um, mobile is different, and we all know that, right? And customers do not like if their video call drains 
their battery on the, their device. So certainly, I think if you are uh, talking, if you have a video call set up for 20 minutes and uh, your battery goes down south, uh, definitely that's not a customer, a good customer experience. So hardware acceleration is very important, um, especially if, if you're working with um, applications uh, where customers use them mostly on the mobile devices. So video coding with dedicated hardware is always better, uh, has better video performance. And if you are really working with uh, good quality video, 720p, 1080p, uh, hardware acceleration is very, very important there. So Chrome uh, 45 uh, is, has started to support H.264 as well. Um, so that's good, because there always has been a big gap between uh, the number of um, uh, devices that support H.264 hardware acceleration versus VP8 hardware acceleration. A and that certainly was troubling us uh, quite a bit. So a stop gap, I think, um, certainly you can fall back to H.264 um, when VP8 hardware acceleration is not supported by the native chipsets. So uh, I think uh, WebRTC could provide some uh, sort of an indication that uh, this device has a VP8 acceleration uh, set up and uh, sort of switch back. Uh, for, uh, switch back to H.264, uh, or there are APIs on the native devices which tell you whether the hardware acceleration is supported for the codec or not. Um, so VP8, H.264, uh, uh, we have been struggling with these uh, so far, but now I think we have new candidates in the mix, and uh, certainly I think we are very excited to look forward to what comes in. So I want to conclude uh, my talk saying that customer experience is very important. Uh, there are many more things that we have learned, so I'll be very happy to share my experiences uh, after this presentation as well. But um, I just wanted to close with the, this quote from Macy's uh, store managers, which says, be everywhere, do everything, but never fail to astonish the customer. Yeah, so now I want to transition to my demo. Uh, Amit is going to do a quick demo. Uh, so why don't we, uh, while we're getting set up here, we have time for probably one question. Questions? You want? Serge. Uh, any indications from your customers on whether they will move from Internet Explorer to Edge? It's very difficult, uh, especially, I think, uh, uh, when these enterprise applications have written their own um, uh, web pages and websites that are v very specific to a version of uh, um, version of Internet Explorer, and I, I think they sort of stick to that version. And okay, so uh, I've talked about the session rehydration, right? So how the session gets recreated uh, during browser reloads and so on and so forth. So I have a quick demo here that I want to show that shows uh, a user logs in into a room-based uh, service, and we have a lot of uh, them right now. And uh, let's say I'm a user, Alice, and I log in into a service, uh, and I create a room. And I'm here. So now I take this URL and I give to my friend, which is me again. <laughs> um, okay, so let me open. Uh oh, so let me open this site again. Then another window. Okay. Actually, it should give me a moment. 
Oh, okay, maybe I'm Okay, we can do that as well. So let me find this. Okay, so now it's good. Right? Uh, so I become Bob in the next window. So now we have uh, Alice and Bob, finally. So we have uh, the call set up. So now I also have a chat service. So Bob says hi. That comes to Alice as well. And Alice says hello there. And that comes to Bob. So now um, Alice, for some reason, wants to reload. And then the connection gets reestablished without any delay. And you see the voice call gets reestablished. You, you see that the data channel gets reestablished. Um, so everything gets seamlessly reestablished with this. So I just wanted to show this quick demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.